Now that you have successfully created your online account, you can submit work through AQHA's member services. Today we're going to file a stallion breeding report. I'll need to sign in with my username and password. I have already associated the appropriate ID number for my stallion breeding report as seen on the top right hand corner. Under the ownership box I have the option for stallion breeding reports. This is where I'll need to file my report. This is the main stallion breeding report screen. I do have the option with this white box to view the menu, which is this screen here, enter my stallion breeding report, or for help. I've never filed a stallion breeding report online before, so I don't have any other information showing the history of stallion breeding reports. Since this is my first time, I'm going to go to the option to enter stallion breeding report. This is where I'll enter the stallion information. It is a good idea to have all the information you need, the stallion's registered name and number, the mare's registered names and numbers, and the breeding dates and locations. I'm going to file the stallion breeding report for K.R. Tejans Boomin. I have his number here. As you've seen under the horse name field, my horse's name has loaded. I'll need to select the breeding season and scroll down. The grid here is going to show my breeding locations. These are just the stallion standing locations and dates. This is not necessarily specific to the mares the stallion was exposed to, as a stallion could have multiple locations he's being standing or breeding. My stallion was standing at this location as of February the 1st. Through the end of November. Now I know that it's not quite that date yet, but my stallion is standing these full dates, so I do need to have that information here. The farm, ranch, or stable where the stallion is standing is just the location the stallion is breeding. This could be home, this could be my backyard, or it could be my ranch. I'm going to put AQHA ranch. Select the appropriate country for where my stallion was standing. As you see, since I selected the United States, the state option did load. Since my stallion was standing in Texas, I'll select that. And the stallion was standing in Amarillo, where I live. I'll need to add this information, and it will result in the grid above. Now that I've entered my stallion standing information, I can go on and enter the mares. I do need to click this option to expand either the plus sign or this link here. I see a grid has loaded much like the one above. I'm sure this one is just for the mare information. I'm going to enter the mare with her registration number. I do happen to have that here. Now this doesn't show me the mare's name yet. That will probably load when I add her to the report. This mare was standing as of March the 1st through March the 31st. Her breeding method used was live cover. I have the option here to release the breeder certificate. If I choose this option, my signature will not be required to register the foal. I'm going to add this mare, and she did result in the grid located above. It does show me the horse's registration number and name, so I can verify my information is correct, along with her exposure starting and end dates, the breeding method of live cover, the owner information, and then I release the breeder certificate today. If for some reason you have entered the breeding dates or breeding method incorrectly, you do have the option to edit that with this button. It's a pencil. You can go in and correct the dates if need be or the breeding method. All this information is correct, so I will close this option. Now I'm going to enter my next mare. I don't have her number, so I'm going to search her name. I did locate my mare, so I'll select her here, and I'll do the same thing for her breeding dates. She's actually exposed to the stallion through the end of the month as well, so I'll need to reflect that on my report. 
She was pasture bred, so I'll choose that option for my breeding method. In this mare, I don't want to release the breeder certificate, so I won't click that box. I will add, and she's also on the grid. I do see that the breeder certificate release date is not here since I did not release that breeder certificate. When I select edit, there's no option for me to go in and release this breeder certificate at this point. So if I did not actually release the breeder certificate when entering the mare, I won't be able to do that as part of my studying breeding report. I did see in member services there is an option to release the breeder certificate separately, so I think I'll release that breeder certificate at a later date. These two mares are the only mares that I'll need to add to my stallion breeding report, so I'm going to save this option. Now that I've saved my stallion breeding report, I'm back to the main stallion breeding report menu. I do see under actions I have the option to enter a mare in case I left one off. I can view my pending stallion breeding report, or if I had previously filed one, I can view the history can actually expand this as well to see the rest of the word. I see the status shows my report is pending, so it's not yet complete. I do want to complete this and get it in on time since the deadline is November 30th, so I think I'm going to go to view pending. This does give me a summary of my pending charges since my report has not been filed. It does tell me your information is not recorded until you complete the payment checkout, so I know I need to do that. I'll scroll down, and I do see at the bottom of the page there is an option for me to add this to my cart. I'm going to select that option. I've gone back to the main stallion breeding report menu, but I also see in my shopping cart I have three items. That must be my stallion breeding report. I'm going to view my cart. I see in my shopping cart I have my stallion breeding report for my stallion and the two mares he was exposed to. I'm ready to check out. This does give me a summary and it tells me to review everything. It does advise me if my order is complete to select the checkout button. This screen does tell me that my order is ready. I don't have my payment method saved here but I am given the option to go ahead and do that. I don't see that there's a bill me option, which means AQHA is going to require a payment to submit any work through online services. That means I'll need to have a Visa, MasterCard, or American Express so that I can go ahead and check out my request. I'm gonna enter my payment method now. Now this is my personal credit card information, so I'm not gonna show that on screen. I will just need to enter the standard name on the card my full 16-digit credit card number, or 15 digits of American Express, the expiration month and year, along with my CVC code located on the back of my card. I do see that AQHA has also provided me with a place to enter my billing information as far as my billing address, or if it matches what's associated to my ID number, I can choose that option. I'm going to enter this now. Now that I've entered my payment method, it does show that a payment method is here. I'm going to use card ending in 1234 so that I can go ahead and submit the payments. If for some reason this card is no longer valid or if you need to change that, you do see that there is a change option to the right of that card number. And that's just the last four numbers of my credit card. I'm going to scroll down and click on the option to check out. Now that my page has completed, I show that I do have my order confirmation screen. It does give me a summary of my charges, and it does tell me that my credit card ending in 1234 was successfully charged the amount of $35 for my stallion breeding report. I also see here that I'm going to receive a receipt via email at the email address I used to create my account. I have successfully filed my stallion breeding report, and while it did take some time, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. However, if you have problems filing your stallion breeding report, you can always give us a call at 806-376-4811. You can also use the contact option at the top of the page. That will take you to the AQHA contact form. This will send an email to our office so that we can help you and try to troubleshoot the problems experienced. Again, if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.